uh, take a look at this image. Uh, now I've just marked it, it is only marked as A, but actually this is a bacitrocin disc, okay? So uh, here probably the clinical question would be something like the person patient has cellulitis and uh, the swab was taken, it was sent to the lab and this is the sort of growth that has been obtained. So uh, you can see that there's a clear zone of hemolysis around uh, the bacitrocin disc, which means that it is bacitrocin sensitive, that is one. And secondly, I hope you can make out the beta hemolysis, right? So how do you in general classify strep, strepa classified based on oxygen requirement into uh, aerobes and facultative, uh, aerobes and anaerobes and the anaerobic streptococci or the peptostreptococci, leave it. Then aerobic strep are classified into alpha, beta and gamma streptococci of which the beta hemolytic streptococci, here you are seeing the beta hemolytic one. The beta hemolytic streptococci can be classified based on bacitrocin sensitivity into bacitrocin susceptible and resistant. So the bacitrocin sensitive one is the strep pyogenes, okay, and the bacitrocin resistant one is a strep agalicti. So strep pyogenes is otherwise known as group A strep, strep pyogenes, and agalicti is known as group B strep, strep agalicti. So how are streptococci grouped? They are grouped based on the carbohydrate C antigen. And uh, I mean, they group based on the carbohydrate C antigen that's called Lansfield grouping. And they're typed into Griffith types based upon the M protein, okay? So uh, the based on bacitrocin, whether it is sensitive, then it is streptococcus pyogenes. And how do you know it is streptococcus agalicti that is based on CAMP test and hippurate hydrolysis, okay? So that is CAMP and hippurate hydrolysis will be positive for agalicti, whereas bacitrocin will be sensitive for Streptococcus pyogenes. So if you get an image like this with beta hemolytic and a bacitrocin disc, looking at whether it is susceptible or resistant, you should be able to say whether it is strep pyogenes or strep pyogenes. Okay. What is this test? We just mentioned this test. This is the CAMP test. Okay. So the CAMP test is done mainly for group B streptococci. Okay, group B streptococci are the ones for which CAM test is done. So here you've got a beta hemolytic strain of Staphylococcus aureus and vertical to that you're streaking the group B strep. Okay, and this group B strep will produce something called as a CAM factor. This CAM factor will actually enhance the hemolysis of the Staph aureus. So if you can see that there is this enhanced zone of hemolysis. One second. Mm, I think I probably changed the color now. Yeah. Okay, so there's an enhanced zone of hemolysis that you get to see here and that is the CAMP test positive. So CAMP test is not just seen in group B strep, it is also seen in listeria. Okay, so this is the CAMP test. CAMP test shows the presence of the CAMP factor. It's a diagnostic test that is used for group B streptococci and listeria. There's something called as a reverse CAMP test also that is again using group B strep and clostridium perfringens. In that, the clostridium perfringens, alpha toxin, and this CAM factor of the group B strep will produce a bow tie sort of hemolysis. So, reverse CAM is positive for clostridium perfringens, and CAM is positive for these two. Okay. Perfringens. So, next time you see this image, you should know. So here in this probably the question would be that a person comes with a what carbuncle and IND was done and uh, the gram stain shows of the pus shows this gram positive uh, you can also see, you can see numerous pus cells and gram positive conchi singly in pairs and in grape like clusters. I hope you can make out these grape like clusters here. Yes. So which is this organism? How do you identify based on this much description itself? You know that the gram positive cocci and grape like clusters are Staphylococcus aureus. Okay. And normally, what is the type of hemolysis that's produced in staph? It is beta hemolysis. So the lesions will be, I mean, the, the growth will typically be beta hemolytic and it will produce these uh, golden yellow uh, colored colonies are normally what is seen in staph aureus. And whitish colored colonies are produced by the coagulase negative staph, that is corns. 
both of them will appear the same on gram staining but there they will be non hemolytic and whitish uh, colored coronaries white colored coronaries whereas uh, golden yellow colored coronaries is classic yellow star aureus then what are the tests that are normally done so whenever there is a, a growth that is obtained and once the gram stain is done then the next to proceed normally catalase uh, test can be done okay catalase test will catalase positive is staph and catalase negative is strep or entero okay and uh, staph uh, from once the smear shows gram positive cocaine clusters then you can do the next step to be done is coagulase okay there is a slide and the tube coagulase test and slide and tube coagulase test will be positive for staph and subsequently from there you can proceed okay so this is a csf uh, picture of a um, of a child um, that's having uh, symptoms suggestive of uh, meningitis and you can see this pus cells and uh, you can see gram positive cocci right what else can you see in this picture what do you think this could be here the cocci are they seen singly no they are actually diplococci so you are seeing gram positive diplococci any other uh, you know feature that you feel uh, with respect to this organism they are like lanceolate right lanceolate diplococci and at least and you know in some of them if you see they do have a surrounding halo okay a small area is seen for some of them at least like the one here probably so with a capsule so which is the gram positive lanceolate diplococci with capsule that is pneumococci right pneumococci so it can cause pneumonia it can cause meningitis so many different kinds of manifestations it can produce and which is the other and what type of hemolysis does it produce it produces alpha hemolysis okay and uh, what are the classical features that you get to see in this okay it is optokin sensitive correct then bile soluble inulin fermenting what do you call the appearance it's drotsman carampoin appearance okay so all these are the classical features that you will see with respect to pneumococci now which is the other alpha hemolytic that is viridens okay so viridens streptococci means it is bile insoluble octokin resistance inulin non fermenting so these are some of the differences between uh, streptococcus pneumoniae and viridens group streptococci both of which are alpha hemolytic okay so gram positive lanceolate capsulated diplococci okay so this is a csf picture of um, showing uh, the presence of pus cells and you can see that they are gram negative so csf uh, showing features suggestive of meningitis and gram negative diplococci yes and are they seen extracellularly or intracellularly some are intracellular and some are extra cellular right so both kinds you can see and uh, to be more precise they are lens or half moon shaped catalase and maltose for uh, i mean glucose and maltose fermenting and they are capsulated also okay so that is some of the uh, differences uh, between i mean the some of the features of this organism which organism am i talking about if you get an image like this it is neisseria meningitidis we discussed this right in the morning session okay neisseria meningitidis it causes pyogenic meningitis and so many other conditions we describe petechial purpuric rash septicemia waterhouse fredrickson right so many different and the drug of choice is ceftriaxone so this is an organism which is obtained from the urethral smear of a patient so the patient is having urethritis and here you can see the plenty of pus cells and you have gram negative diplococci again but they are predominantly intracellular okay so gram negative diplococci intracellular mainly and uh, you can use your imagination a little bit more then you will start feeling that it is kidney shaped yes 
non-capsulated and only glucose is fermented. Maltose is not fermented. Okay. And uh, the normal flora is in the genital tract. What are we talking about here? This is Neisseria gonorrhea. Okay. And it's a sexually mm, transmission condition, trans, uh, transmitted disease that is gonorrhea. And it also causes mm, other conditions. Uh, it also, it'll, it, I mean, it manifests as urethritis, insurbicitis and all those things. And uh, it is a gram-negative diplococca. Okay. Penicillin is the treatment of choice. Now, uh, this one classical appearance, if you have a gram stain of a throat swab and you're seeing this appearance, this is typically what is called as the Chinese letter pattern, right? You can see the V and L arrangements. Can't you see the V and L arrangements? Yes. And it's otherwise known as palisade arrangement, cuneiform arrangement. Basically, they are considered to be irregular stained with club-shaped ends, okay? Although you can't make out. There is a description like that, club-shaped irregular stain. And next to that, what do you see? That blackish tip and that greenish bacilli. That is a special stain used to demonstrate what? It is used to demonstrate the metachromatic granule. So the metachromatic granules are the ones that appear black and the green one is the bacilli. So which organism are we talking about? We're talking about Corine bacterium diphtheriae. What is a special stain here for the green one? That is your Albert's stain. Okay. So besides Albert's, are there other stains? Yes, Smeesa's and Ponder's stain. And these metachromatic are otherwise known as Babe's turned granules or volutin granules, polymetaphosphate. Right. They've got so many polar bodies. They've got different kinds of names. Okay. So basically, they are the energy uh, reserves of the cell and uh, special staining techniques can be employed to see them, okay? Then this is a, uh, a particular type of gram stain, um, you know, wherein you can see that there is a gram positive bacilli but with a central unstained portion and at the same time, the cell is not bulging. So uh, the, cell, the cell is not bulged means gram positive bacilli with non-bulging. What do you call, what is it, what could be the reason for this unstained portion? It could be a spore, right? So, um, you know, this has got a typical appearance which is known as the bamboo stick appearance, okay? And gram positive bacilli with non-bulging spores, okay? So that is very, very important, non-bulging spores is bacillus anthracis whereas gram positive bacilli with bulging spores is clostridium species right so that is the bulging spores and besides this you know if the newton agar is observed uh, under the microscope you get something called medusa head appearance then there is gelatin stab appearance gelatin inverted fir tree appearance is there mcfedin reaction with polychrome metal in blue that uh, normally uh, shows the presence of this capsule. So numerous named reactions. String of pearls appearance when it's grown on a blood agar plate with penicillin. So whenever you study bacillus anthracis, it's got so many other such named reactions. Okay. Then, uh, and these are some of the uh, unique features. Okay. The spore, which is unstained and doesn't bulge. Right. This you immediately want to jump and say AFB. Yes, it is an acid fast organism. Is there anything different from the normal AFB smear? Uh, the history would probably help you. It would say something like a skin smear of a patient who came with a hypoesthetic patch. So then you know that you're not looking at uh, mycobacterium TB. But rather here you can see plenty of acid fast bacilli singly and in groups, like in bundles, right? And this bundle is uh, because the bacilli are held together by a lipid laden substance and it's called as globi or cigar bundle appearance, right? And this is usually seen within these foamy macrophages. And what are they called? They are called virtuose lepra cells. Am I right? Yeah. So this is classically seen in leprosy. Now morning session we discussed leprosy. So what type of leprosy do you expect to see this? 
this is seen in lepromatous leprosy right so lepromatous leprosy i told you they are multi bacillary the smear will be positive so you can see numerous globi okay which are uh, or sigma one will appear in and uh, that is they are seen within the Vershaw's lepra cells or the Fermi macrophages. And what is difference in the staining for Mycobacterium leprae versus Mycobacterium TB? For leprae, when you uh, decolorize, uh, decolorize it, you are using 5% sulfuric acid, 5% H2SO4 for leprae. Whereas for TB, it is 20% H2SO4, right? So that is the difference between Mycobacterium leprae and Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Then uh, this is an electron microscopic image. Uh, the history will be something like the patient has diarrhea and uh, you know uh, diffuse uh, symptoms and uh, probably history of a food intake or something from outside. And this is the electron microscopic image showing these attaching and defacing lesions. So uh, that is an intestinal epithelium with these lesions. But if you get these terms like uh, showing attaching and effacing lesions or pedestal okay pedestal only means a step so whenever i see these images i think these are all steps okay so showing pedestal and uh, the reason for the pathogenicity being the bundle forming pili then you are looking at when you hear if you if, if the words like bundle forming pili, um, then attaching and effacing lesions and um, pedestals, all that is present. Then it is classically we are talking about entropathogenic E. coli. Okay, EPEC. So entropathogenic E. coli is non-toxigenic and non-invasive, and uh, the main reasons are the uh, bundle forming pili and the presence of attaching and effacing lesions that is what is responsible for its pathogenesis. Now there are so many other types of E. coli when you think about this you should also remember which is the other one you know ETEC. What is ETEC? Entrotoxigenic E. coli, travelers diarrhea, labile toxin, stable toxin all those things come under ETEC. Then you have entroinvasive E. coli okay EIEC means very much like shigellosis, virulence marker antigen invasive type uh, of uh, of e coli infection then enterohemorrhagic e coli enterohemorrhagic e coli produces shiga like toxin or virocytotoxin uh, gb3 receptor all those things microangiopathic hemolytic anemia causing hemolytic uremic syndrome and hemorrhagic colitis <clears throat> so all that comes under enterohemorrhagic e coli then you've got uh, diffusely uh, adherent E. coli and enteroaggregative E. coli. Okay, diffusely aggregative and enteroaggregative E. coli. These are also toxigenic ones. Uh, that is, this produces a toxin EAST1 toxin. Okay, and uh, but it is non-invasive. So the invasive types are the enteroinvasive E. coli, but the toxigenic types are the enteroaggregative, enterohemorrhagic, and enterotoxigenic E. coli. Okay, so a little bit about the diarogenic E. coli and for all of them you don't have to give any specific treatment, just a supportive treatment will do and the patient will get better.